down to two. Where the hell do I even begin with this thing? Well, I think a good starting point is that, yes, obviously I have a microphone that I'm using right now. I actually used this mic in my Jackass Forever review when I was recording that. I, uh, I didn't hold it up to my face, obviously, but I thought maybe if I started doing it like this that it would only pick up my voice because that it, it worked so well that it was picking up just everything like a, like if I just somewhat smacked my lips or just my finger brushed my leg something like that it would pick it up very well so I'm hoping that this at least puts more focus on my actual voice and nothing else just my normal speaking voice here giving this review for Don to Two the newest album from Kanye West and as I uh, transition to my right hand here it's been a lot of drama leading up to this album you know, obviously, I mean, I doubt many of you guys are hidden under a rock. Even if you are, you've probably heard about all the stuff he's been doing on Instagram. All the things he's been saying about, you know, Pete Davidson and his so-called uh, relationship right now with Kim Kardashian, Kanye's ex-wife. It's just been a lot of drama, a lot of stuff happening. Kanye definitely seems to be having somewhat of a meltdown right now. And he put out a couple singles before the release of this album. One of them was Easy back in January, the song he did with The Game, which was a song where he took some shots at Pete Davidson. I wasn't too crazy about the song. I did like the, how the instrumental sampled uh, two big samples. One of them was Easy Does It by Easy E, and then the other one was Paul Revere by the Beastie Boys. It's a cool sound, definitely a nice throwback to that era of hip hop, especially the record scratches at the end, really nice touch. But I do think that Kanye's verse on that song is pretty much a mess. I mean, everyone has said what has been said or what can be said about that verse by now, but it's definitely not great. It gets off to an okay start, I think, but does kind of fall apart by the end. And the game is actually pretty good in the song, so I'll, I'll give him props for that. And then another single that was released was the song City of Gods, which also had contributions from 5 Year Foreign and Alicia Keys delivering the hook to the song. And yeah, I was also kind of just iffy on this one. I thought it was all right. Um, although I will say that it has grown on me quite a bit since then, and I'll, I'll actually get to it later when I get to this point on the album. But the big thing about the release of this album is the fact that it is only going to be available on Kanye West's stem player. It's going to be exclusive to that thing. So, so yeah, not on Spotify, not on YouTube, not on Apple Music, not on Apple Music. Pretty much no other streaming service, nothing else. Just the stem player, exclusive to that. Which I gotta say, I was like kind of pissed about that when I heard it initially. Like, oh my God, you're gonna you're gonna make me buy or pay two hundred dollars to buy this thing to listen to the album. Like, I was pretty upset about it. But obviously, here we are now. I've listened to the album. I'm sitting here right now to do a review for it. So obviously, I. I fell weak to Kanye's powers and I purchased this damn player. Which, you know, whether or not I do like this album, I'm very glad I did because it's a really cool little thing. I've only messed with it a couple of times. I definitely don't think I've discovered everything there is to do on it and to do with it, but it's a really cool little thing and I don't think it's worth $200 necessarily, but it's definitely a, a cool purchase and I'm, I am glad that I bought it. As it obviously does have the ability to isolate just the vocals or just the bass or the drums or the samples. Or you can have just like the vocals and the samples going or just the bass and the drums. It's really cool to just play with it and experiment with it. So yeah, I mean, I think I've pretty much said all I need to say uh, on setting up the album. Now to talk about the actual album, the music portion that is given to us with the release of Donda 2. First of all, I don't know why this is called Donda 2, really. It does not feel much like a sequel to what we got with Donda 1, which, uh, on a side note, that album has grown on me quite a bit. I think it's important to say that because I know my review for it, I thought it was just okay. I like the album now. I think it's got a lot of really good songs and yeah, it's, it's a lot better for me now. And yeah, just listening to this album now, I don't see why it was called Donda 2. I really don't think that's an appropriate title for it. As it really doesn't talk much on, you know, Donda West, the title of the album. It doesn't talk, he doesn't really talk about his mom hardly at all in this album. At least from what I picked up on and there's very little 
gospel slash religious undertones in it as well, which was also a big part of Dawn to One. In a way, this sort of feels like the spiritual successor to 808s and Heartbreak, as he is delving deeper into his divorce with Kim Kardashian, and into just his mental state of mind, his emotions, himself, really. He's just talking about himself and how things are going for him, which is obviously not very good, as we've seen from his social media meltdowns and other things he's been involved with recently in the news. The album opens with the track True Love, which has some vocals from the late artist XXXTentacion, and it tries to open this album up on this kind of sad and dark notes, which, yeah, it is a, definitely a sad sounding song, definitely emotional, but I'm just not sure what it is about it. I just felt very underwhelmed by this opening track. I don't think that X's vocals fit very well with the song, and it also just copy and pastes the drums that are used on his track, on Connie's track, Runaway. It just feels very lazily put together. That's another thing about this album, that the recording sessions, according to Wikipedia, lasted from January to February of 2022, so less than two months that he spent recording this album. And you do feel it. This album, in a way, does feel kind of rushed, as opposed to Donda, which the sessions from that spanned almost three years. It does feel rushed. It feels like it was kind of completed on a time restraint and at the same time also a bit in incomplete. The song Get Lost I think is the absolute epitome of the incomplete feeling on this album. Kanye's vocals on this song sound very muddy and rusty and they just they don't sound very good at all and it sounds very much like a demo like something that was just on the chopping board and didn't really finish get getting cut up together. The album does somewhat pick up its pace with the song Too Easy with a pretty decent okay instrumental I think. I like the staticky quick fast paced drums in the mix. Pretty exciting finish as well sonically speaking but to me just the lyrics and the vocals from Kanye on this are not very good. They're quite annoying actually the level of autotune that's on his voice and just the nonsense nonsense that he's spitting out. The album does actually hit a pretty nice patch though with these next few tracks. The first one being Flowers which is supposedly alluding to Kanye taking credit for Kim Kardashian's fame which is definitely an interesting topic to debate about. You know I mean Kim and Kanye have or had been this iconic deal for almost about 10 years up until their divorce. And yeah, the Kardashians did have that show and were around for a few years up until her and Kanye started dating. But it does make you wonder, like, would she have as big and as notable of a name as she does now if it weren't for Kanye? And I also really like the instrumental on this thing. It's a pretty cool blend of this drill type beat as well as, I don't know, some kind of kids show theme. Like if the Rugrats theme and off the grid, had a baby. That's kind of what this would sound like. And then we get this absolutely phenomenal track, Security. Oh my gosh, I was blown away by this track, honestly. I absolutely love the cold, desolate, industrial nature of this thing, the sound of it. It's kind of a scary sound too. I mean, I, I genuinely am kind of intimidated by Kanye after listening to this track. I very much get some Yeezus vibes off of this song if Hell of a Life was kind of a preview of what was to come on Yeezus. This is definitely like the nostalgic throwback to that album. And I like some of the lines in this one, like the one where he's talking about being n naked in the kitchen, <laughs> cooking grits, or security's gonna need security for this, never stand between a man and his kids. I mean, Kanye really does sound like aggressive and assertive on this track and I think that the album really needed more songs like this on it. I also really like the track We Did It Kid which has some features from Migos and Baby Keem. It's got some really good crisp horns that drive the track and yeah I mean Baby Keem, Migos, they both do a very good job. I think their contributions are very well done and it's definitely one of the happier sounding songs on the album. Definitely more good vibes, less sad and dreary. The track Pablo has me feeling a little bit indifference. I, on the one hand, do kind of like the psychedelic trap beats that accompanies this track, which, um, you know, you look at the features, Future and Travis Scott, it definitely sounds a lot like something that 
either of those guys, especially Travis Scott, would do on one of their own tracks. I think it just comes down to the verses, though, and the performances from these guys, which I found to be pretty weak and underwhelming. And I don't know what to think about Kanye's kind of reggae, kind of dancehall-like accents. It's weird to be hearing that coming out of someone else's mouth that isn't named Aubrey. Louis Bags featuring Jack Harlow I think is another solid cut on this thing, although some kind of muddy production on this one, especially at a couple moments when the drums sound way too loud and they just like cut out almost all the the rest of the sounds on this song. But I think it has a nice sound to it overall, a nice instrumental, and I like Jack Harlow's feature. The line about him that related to like all these dead rappers recently, that's definitely something that's been on my mind anytime I see a new, young, up and coming rapper in the music industry. Like, oh gosh, I just hope that they don't die soon. You know, like it's hopefully they live long and into their old age. Happy with the featuring Future, that's a tongue twister right there, um, is I think one of the most annoying songs on this whole project. It's also the longest one as well, coming close to five minutes in length, which I really don't think is justified at all. And Future, once again, as he does on a lot of songs, just sounds asleep on the mic. He, I mean, this is the executive producer. Future, executive produced this album. The executive producer is hopping on the mic. He should be spitting bars. He should be making his name heard, and it's just... I really like the sad and melancholic sound of the track Sci-Fi. The strings on this track, I think, sound really good and also very sad. So sonically, I'm a really big fan of this track and I like what it's going for, but unfortunately some of the lyrics on this are kind of dumb and weak and the feature, or the feature I should say, from Sean Leon is probably the most forgettable feature on this entire album. Selfish uh, with another feature from XXXTentacion, I think is it's very short, but I think it's a sweet track. I actually do think the X fits pretty well with this one. I like the hook that he delivers, and Kanye definitely admits to some of his weaknesses and some of his mistakes in the past, and so I do like the direction that he took in this track. Lord Lift Me Up is okay. I do like the orchestral arrangement in this one. It is very pleasant sounding, very bright sounding, um, but Vori just really, it really just sounds like he's singing over some kind of acapella orchestral thing. It, it sounds nothing more than that, honestly. Then we get to City of Gods, which, like I said, wasn't crazy about initially. Didn't hate it, though. But I definitely like it a lot more in the context of this album. It's easily one of the most exciting and energetic moments in the entire record. Nothing really mind-blowing with regards to um, Alicia Keys, 504, and, and Kanye's contributions to it, but I think they all do a pretty solid job and provide a good amount of energy to it. First time in a long time, the second to last track on this thing has a feature from Soldier Boy, which, I mean, I will say it's definitely cool to hear him on a song um, that isn't, you know, 15 years old. And I never thought I would say this, but this, I just listened to a song where Kanye gets outshined by a soldier boy. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly more to say about Kanye's contribution rather than soldier boy. Soldier boy doesn't really impress that much on this song, but Kanye is just, uh, I don't know what he was thinking with some of these lines. They're just, a lot of them are pretty cringe. That jetty line, lightsaber like a jetty has haunted my nightmares ever since I listened to this for the first time. And then we get to the last track, Easy, which, you know, like I already talked about it, I'm not too crazy about it, but it's just, it's sort of a mid-tier track in context to the rest of the album, I would say. And I do find the Pete Davidson line kind of funny, personally. I know I can understand people saying it's immature and it's just stupid to threaten Pete Davidson like that. But I, I think it's funny. When I first heard it, I laughed. I thought it was kind of humorous. Yeah, so Donda 2, I really do think is actually a mixed bag. I think I remember saying that about Donda 1, that it was a mixed bag on the when I reviewed it. But you know, I'd only listened to it one time. I've listened to this album multiple times. I actually feel like I can review it and give a valid criticism of it. And I do think that it just has some pretty mixed results to it. Some high spots, some low spots. Topically speaking, it's kind of all over the place. I do think that the production for the most part 
is very good and very impressive on a lot of tracks you know specifically songs like security uh, we did it kid even easy i think is a very well produced song but even that at a couple of moments does fall a little bit flat in my opinion and yeah like i said it just it doesn't feel right to call this down to two if anything it feels like it should be called revenge i don't know revenge of the sith <laughs> i don't know it definitely feels more like that as he's taking more shots at kim and pete or skeets as he's called him on social media so yeah overall kind of a disappointing album uh, it definitely had its high moments there are a couple of tracks in particular that i loved and i think really could have benefited from just having more of those types of songs on this album but unfortunately it did have more uh, misses than hits for me resulting in not a horrible album but just a kind of mediocre kind of mid-tier album i think and i th also think it's one of connie's weaker projects he's ever put out i'm giving donda 2 a c it definitely could have been a lot better especially following donda um definitely would have expected better from kanye and again i do wish that kanye had just delved into more of the sad and dread-filled experiences he's been having as of late this could have been like 808s and heartbreak part two except we got donda part two even though it doesn't feel like it ties into donda at all i don't know why it's called that what did you think of this album i'm very curious to know i mean I doubt that a lot of you guys have actually listened to it that are watching this right now or that are subscribed to me. Who knows, maybe he'll eventually release it onto streaming services or I, I mean, I guess I don't actually, I don't think I would buy this on vinyl or CD or whatever, but I think it would be cool if he did release it on that medium of music at least. But by the off chance that you have heard this, I would be very curious to know what you think of it and what some of your favorite tracks are. I'm going to start putting my rating system in the description box below, which I actually, I don't know if any of you guys read it, but I always put stuff in the description as well. I put my rating and for album reviews, I'm putting my favorite tracks down there so you can go and look at that. And I think I pretty much said all I have to say about this album. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you all for watching. Um, and also just let me know what you think of this different format. I ha kind of have a different setup here. Got my microphone right here. I actually forgot to turn on my lights. I have a, a lighting little thingy here that I use. I've been using for a little while now. And I just noticed like 10 minutes ago that I forgot to even turn it on. So, I mean, it'll like here, let me actually turn it on right now. All right, it's on now. I don't know if that'll make a huge difference to you guys watching this. But yeah, so this is what it'll look like now, this new sort of setup I have going on. And your feedback on this would be very much appreciated if you wouldn't mind just leaving a comment about that. Okay, now I'm done. I'm going to close it out again. Thank you for watching. Peace out.